and welcome back. If you're just joining us, I am Dr. Douglas Merriweather, the resident scientist here at The Random Show, and we're examining the scientific principles and theories that make humor, and specifically our show, work. Our next topic is the highly complex Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. In the early 1900s, as quantum mechanics swept the scientific community, Erwin Schrodinger attempted to relate the idea of superposition as it occurs on the microscopic level of subatomic particles to the nature and behavior of matter on the macroscopic level, the way we perceive things. Superposition is a quantum phenomenon in which objects exist in all possible states simultaneously until they are observed. Schrodinger suggested explaining this by placing a cat in a thick lead box with a capsule of cyanide along with a Geiger counter and an amount of radioactive material that may or may not decay with equal probability. If the Geiger counter detected decay, it would break the cyanide capsule, thus killing the cat. If it did not detect decay, the capsule would remain unbroken and the cat still alive. Since according to the principle of superposition, the radioactive material has both decayed and not decayed because it is unobserved. Then the Geiger counter has both detected and not detected it, and has both broken the cyanide capsule and not broken it, and therefore the cat is both dead and alive at the same time. The cat returns to one state, either dead or alive, once it is observed. Here's how the principle relates to humor. Every joke or gag has a setup before the punchline. Until it is delivered, we cannot determine if a joke is humorous or not humorous. Thus, the punchline, unobserved, exists in a simultaneous state of funniness and unfunniness. Examine the setup for this anecdote. Once there was an aspiring veterinarian who put himself through veterinary school working nights as a taxidermist. Upon graduation, he decided he could combine his two vocations to better serve the needs of his patients and their owners, while doubling his practice and, therefore, his income. He opened his own office with a shingle on the door, saying, See, we all anticipate the punchline because we do not know if the joke is funny or not. The punchline will determine this, but like the cat in Schrodinger's thought experiment, it has not been, so to speak, let out of the bag. Therefore, the joke is in a state of both funniness and unfunniness. Notice the principle at work again in this short visual gag. This principle is especially helpful for setting up a joke with an unfunny punchline. If the punchline were to be observed, it would clearly be unfunny, but because the audience has yet to observe it, it exists in both a state of funniness and unfunniness. A far cry above being simply unfunny. Well, that's enough about Schrodinger's cat for a while. We don't want to kill the subject, though I hear radioactive cats have 18 half-lives. <laughs> Pretty funny if I do say so myself, which I just did, so I suppose I do. We'll be right back with more Science of Humor.